My name is Kirk Anderson, and I am the mayor in the city of St. Croix Falls, Wisconsin. Uh, and that is in the beautiful western part of Wisconsin. Most people from the Twin Cities know it because we're right next to Taylor's Falls, but we're trying to uh, be a little bit more of our own identity and have people say, oh, I know where St. Croix Falls is. Uh, and it's a beautiful place that everyone should come to visit and uh, spend some time with here. Hi there, I'm Gianna from Family Fun Twin Cities, and this is the Let's Go Do Fun Stuff show. This summer, it was my goal to try to get around the Twin Cities and show you around. However, the summer kind of got away from me, slash, it was way more stressful than I expected. So, we finally get to introduce you to St. Croix Falls. Many of you in the Twin Cities area probably know all about it and have been there. But if you haven't, or if you didn't realize that it was just across the river from Taylor's Falls, we thought it would be a great time to introduce you. And right now, the colors in the fall here are beautiful. And I would highly recommend a road trip to St. Croix Falls and Taylor's Falls. So let's get to know Kirk Anderson, the mayor of St. Croix Falls. Okay, so I just want to say a couple of things. Number one. This is my friend, Kirk Anderson, in real life. Like, we've known each other, like, 30 years, I think, because we were in college together. So maybe not quite 30, but we're, we're, we're going on 30 years. Um, <laughs> Which means we have old kids. <laughs> we ha well, yeah, our kids are in college together where we became friends. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So, um, but Kirk became the mayor how many years ago? Uh, I became mayor uh, right at COVID in April of 2020. And then you were just reelected. Yep. So I'm on my third term now, and uh, I just started that. So I'll be doing this until 2026. So two more years. It's yep. two-year terms? Yep. Nice. So tell me about the history of St. Croix Falls, or, or the whole St. Croix Valley area. Yeah, so the, the history of St. Croix Falls um, starts back... Um, in the early, in the late 1800s, uh, when the mining of trees was real popular, we um, have lumberjacks come up um, from Stillwater to this area and cut down uh, trees and then send them down the St. Croix River. So Taylor's Falls and St. Croix Falls are positioned on either side of the St. Croix River, and um, it became a great way to uh, get logging um, down towards. Stillwater, where they had uh, the means to cut those trees up and utilize them for lumber and for other different things. So, uh, so that was kind of the big boon up in this area for um, the late 1800s. Um, we had a, a group of people who had that vision and started settling in St. Croix Falls and Taylor's Falls. Um, and from there, it became kind of an industry until the logging uh, industry started slowing down. We also um, have a beautiful dam, which is very photogenic, uh, but really it's just an electro hydroelectric dam uh, that was built in the early 1900s, uh, right around 1905, and uh, that produces electricity for Minnesota and Wisconsin um, using the water that flows over um, over the man-made dam. So it's not. Um, it's not a falls, even though it's Taylor's Falls and St. Croix Falls. It's really just a dam that was built. So that's what it's named after? Um, that's that's kind of what people think. Oh, okay. But uh, we don't really have a, a true falls, okay. um, although it, it does look like a falls. And it, and it is a very pretty um, place to, to visit, um, a very yeah. popular place in town. A good photo, like a good place for photos and mm -hmm. stuff. Maybe it was called St. Croix Falls and Taylor's Falls because they were felling trees. It and could they be. fell yeah. down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some of our, our folklore is um, that the, the logs tended to jam up. And so we had a very large uh, jam of trees in the middle of uh, what is the Dalles, um, just south of St. Croix Falls and Taylor's Falls. And that required a massive amount of dynamite. Um, many people were injured in that, uh, but they basically blew up tons and tons of uh, dynamite. Uh, in Minneapolis, in St. Paul, 
were just starting to kind of boom as well as a city and um, and so they would send people up here but we didn't have a highway up here so it was a pretty big process to either by train or by um, a, a wagon with a horse to come up to what is probably now Taylor's Falls mm -hmm. um, Highway 8 through uh, Forest Lake and so it wasn't quite as easy as the less than one hour drive from the Twin Cities <laughs> which right. is why we get a lot of people to come up here and and enjoy that and we actually celebrate with one of our big festivals for the community okay. which is Wanigan Days and a Wanigan was a barge that had a houseboat on it and it was typically a kitchen that the cooks would uh, be on when the loggers were working and they would uh, cook the meals for the loggers and then they would eat out on the banks of the St. Croix River um, and so we named our our festival after that. Kirk, I mean Mayor Anderson, told me that Wanigan Days happens in the middle of July. And then I asked him, when did St. Croix Falls and Taylor's Falls become a tourist destination? I think it's always been a place that people have heard of. And uh, even when I was in college, we would come up to St. Croix Falls well before I knew that I would ever live here, be mm -hmm. the mayor here, uh, because of the interstate park. Uh, Interstate Park has um, huge, tall bluffs that uh, we would go rock climbing on, and they had miles and miles of uh, hiking trails. So mm -hmm. we would come up here as a group of friends and spend the day um, exploring around uh, the area. And I think even you know, back um, 50, 60, 100 years ago, people would do the same because it's a very unique riverway has a very long history, and um, and so it's been a tourist destination for that for a long time. Um, as far as the uh, river goes, there's a lot that people do on the river. There's um, obviously kayaking, uh, canoeing, and swimming, but they also have a, a very long history of having a paddle boat that um, will go and do a tour around the uh, the beautiful area as well. So that's, that's on the Taylor's it. Falls side. Yep. That's, okay. Yep. That's part like of it. Like to get on there. Yeah. So the the tour boat is as you're coming into uh, Taylor's Falls. There's a a pull off that they have a beautiful space there that you can buy tickets and take that. And it's uh, you can do a dinner cruise or you can do just a, a day cruise. For mm -hmm. rock climbing is is huge and mm -hmm. and. Um, if you're a kayaker, there are times where the, the water does have some pretty fun spots to kayak with a little bit of white caps and things like that. We talked about the river St. Croix Falls was named for and the reality of what to expect with that river. Well, St. Croix River, depending upon the season, usually in the fall, or I'm sorry, in the spring, we actually have to close the river down because as snow melts up north, it comes straight down the river and St. Croix River is so fierce mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately people come to see that and they um, get too close to the river, they get sucked in. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, we, we just say, hey, no boats, no yeah. um, kayaking. Um, and it's very much at your own risk. Right. Most of the time it's adventurous, but it's very safe. And okay. so it's just in those couple times where it, it's literally scary. Okay, and, as a and that's when firefighter, you... firefighter, I'm the one that gets called to go to the river, and so we just say, please don't go to the river right now. Just give it a couple weeks. So with that history lesson, maybe we can move on to... That's probably not going to be okay. We can move on to like things that we can do outdoors. You've mentioned some, like the boats and the kayaks and the rock climbing. You mm -hmm. said there's a lot of trails. Can you tell us a little bit more about like the trails and the there's both hiking and biking. Mm -hmm. okay. So St. Croix Falls has well over 20 miles of trails. And those trails uh, are for hiking, um, biking, running, um, and mountain biking, uh, skiing, and, and the like. So there's actually, um, you know, depending upon the season, there's always something to do on the trails. So if you're a mountain biker and you're really interested in coming up and doing uh, mountain biking, there are off-road mountain biking trails from easy to hard where you're 
you better be good at it. Mm -hmm. um, both for regular mountain bikes to fat tire mountain bikes, which oh. are real popular mm -hmm. both in the summer, mostly probably in the winter. Mm -hmm. And then um, the thing with St. Croix Falls is we have the the very beginning of the Ice Age Trail, which is similar to like the um, the AT out east or the CDC or you know one of the national trails. It's a 1,200 mile trail that starts in St. Croix Falls oh, wow. on the Pothole Trail in Interstate. So that's where you begin. You take your pictures there and then you do about 10 miles through uh, St. Croix Falls and then you start going up north, and eventually you'd get to Door County oh. through that trail system. And every year we have people that start in Door County and end here and celebrate it or vice versa. So, uh, we had a really cool uh, individual who did a winter hike with her dog, and uh, she finished 1,200 miles in the winter. First time for a, a gal to do that, and uh, she had a... a beautiful dog that did it and they came in and so I um, had the pleasure of giving um, a certificate from the city saying congratulations. Uh, we also have a 96 mile, it's not all in St. Croix Falls, okay. but it starts in St. Croix Falls at our city hall. Um, it's an old railroad bed and it, it will take you north uh, for about 96 miles. We do Gandhi man, Gandhi dancer marathons on it. I was gonna say, is that Gandhi dancer? Yep, that's okay, the Gandhi yep. Dancer, and that is good for biking and hiking. Mm -hmm. And in the in the winter, it's good for snowmobiles and um, four wheelers as well. But for uh, the summer, it's really popular with hiking. Um, it's actually, the Ice Age Trail kind of feeds into that mm -hmm. up until Luck, uh, Wisconsin. And, um, and then the bikers really utilize it. Mm -hmm. In St. Croix Falls, right off of the Gandhi, is where the Woolly Mammoth um, Bike Club has wow. created a, an intense, very, very well-maintained mountain bike trails. And that's through the woods and um, some, you know, more, more challenging things that I don't do anymore, uh, more challenging rides. And then also you can get into the easier rides. So if you're a mountain biker, that's a great place to start. Um, and we have the Woolly Mammoth Bike uh, Race, which gets about 600 participants in it. And it's one of the biggest ones in the Midwest. So that was the trails. Can you tell us more about like water fun things? Yeah, absolutely. So obviously um, if you are looking for things to do in the water. Uh, the St. Croix River is kind of the right through right through the city, uh, but we also have lakes around the area uh, that that you can do boating and fishing. So a lot of fishing activities. Um, if you are a kayaker or a, a boater and want to camp, you could go up River Road in St. Croix Falls and uh, get off at um, Nevers Dam and it's a um, 10 mile stretch and there's campsites that you can stay at. You don't, oh. um, you don't have to pay. It's part of the National Scenic Riverway, which okay. is one of, the, one of the great things in the city um, that we have is a national park, which is the river. And then we have a state park and actually Minnesota has their version of interstate park as well, as well as um, 450 acres of hiking trails in the work preserve, which oh. is in St. Croix Falls as well. Oh my word. So yeah, it's, it's pretty intense, but you could get, um, off with your canoes, get dropped off at Never Dam. And if you just did the canoeing down to Lions Park, um, at the tip of the North end of town, that would be about a four hour canoe trip okay. if you're paddling. But a lot of people, including um, my family, we like to camp on the river. So if you load up your boat, just like you're doing a Boy Scout trip or mm -hmm. a Girl Scout trip, and you just pick an empty campsite, you can um, claim that campsite by putting a tent on it and stay there and then continue on down the, the river. Uh, if you wanted to do the southern part of the river, which is beyond the dam, mm -hmm. you can go to Interstate Park and get in there and paddle all the way down to Osceola. And there's actually a couple different canoe 
rental places that will put you in a van, drop mm -hmm. you off, and bring and you back. Pick you back and bring okay. you back to your car. So that that works really well. There's uh, a really nice one down in Osceola that does that, and then there's um, some in Taylor's Falls that will do that. As well. <sighs> okay, so that's a lot of water things. What other? Th okay, not that we need anything more because this place is crazy busy with fun outdoor activities. But is there um, other? Anything else that I haven't thought about for outdoor activities in the summer? Yeah, so our downtown is uh, situated right on the river. So if you didn't want to go out into the woods or, um, you know, an excursion like that, our downtown has a lot of great shopping um, opportunities. We just did a 59-foot mural uh, oh, that yeah. says Welcome to St. Croix Falls that a lot of people are um, enjoying and we encourage people to take pictures in front of it's literally 59 feet by 18 feet and then on one end it's 12 foot so it's kind of an odd shape but it's <laughs> on a hill and uh, that has the history of our city uh, to some extent not the full history obviously but um, but within that mural are different parts of uh, what makes St. Croix Falls special so oh, that's cool so that's a lot of fun and then great shopping we have a live uh, theater in town uh, with that's a professional theater called the Festival Theater and uh, they for 25 years were in the Civic Auditorium and then the Civic Auditorium was supposed to be renovated um, in 2015 for various reasons that did not happen until I became mayor and we fought and fought for that and uh, so I'm really excited because um, an individual bought that and they are in the last stages of renovation of the beautiful historic civic auditorium that has been here since uh, 1917 is when it was built wow and so it is um, completely redone it will have a live stage for music performances it'll have um, a theater group that will be the main leasee and then they should be contracting with a restaurant here to have a restaurant in there as well. Oh, cool. Um, and that is right off the overlook. So as you go out and look outside at um, the dam mm -hmm. and uh, take your pictures there, uh, you can go capture a dinner and a theater or music performance. Um, and then we also kind of, one of our big things is uh, music on the overlook. And music on the overlook is every Friday from uh, June till August. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have live music. Uh, so Are they mostly uh, local bands or are they kind of a little bit of everything? It's a mix of everything. We have a uh, person that schedules all those. And so they have some real popular bands that are more followed. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they have some family bands and some kids programs and things like that. Um, a couple years ago, we had a rendition of Johnny Cash. <laughs> nice. And I had no idea what was going on because when we came through town from up north, um, the overlook was spilling out into the street. And so some bands are, are much more uh, popular and they have a following and we'll get people from all over the cities even coming up. So. This does not cost anything for people. The music on the overlook does not cost anything for families and people, right? Yeah, most of the events in town, not all of them, but most of them are um, are free to the public. Maybe we should move on to like specifically family-friendly, kid-friendly things that happen here. I know mm -hmm. I've taken my kids to Fonda Rosa yep. and I've taken them, they've done the, the paddle boarding, not pad, no, the canoeing down, paddling, canoeing down um, St. Croix. What else have we done? We've done the pothole, pothole trail. Is there a pothole trail on both sides of Interstate Park, or is it just Taylor's Falls? St. Croix Falls has the pothole trail that is the name of it, but okay. on both sides of the river they have potholes from okay. the river raging through and, right. and, and you know causing those unique yeah. you know, glacial holes. Yeah. We have camped at Interstate Park, and... Um, we may have not believed our kids when they said that there was water coming in their tent because <laughs> they were literally rained out. Like it was, I don't know, probably four inches rushing through the tent. We part, we we camped in the wrong campsite. That's all I have to say. Uh, so, Fonda Rosa is up on the on the hill towards the east end of town, 
and it has uh, live animals. They have a variety of different, uh, it's like a, a wild animal petting zoo. Um, Except it, there are some things you do not want to pet. Porcupines. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Porcupines, maybe a bear. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they still have the bear there, but. Uh, they are an also. ocelot or something, like some wild cat. Don't put your finger in there. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it, uh, it gives you an opportunity to wander around the grounds, and there's a lot of deer. There's a lot of other animals that, that are out there. They have staff that will work with uh, kids uh, to pet, you know, bunnies and there's chickens and birds and mm -hmm. donkeys. Um, very popular <laughs> right now with summer school. Um, if you uh, go, maybe check to see the schedule mm -hmm. so that you know that there's not going to be 35 buses from the cities. Yeah. But uh, it is a lot of fun. My kids love it there. Uh, you can spend the whole day there. They have food. Um, they have uh, great parking and mm -hmm. um, and just a, a lot of fun. So you're going to see more wildlife there than you do on in the woods by far yeah for sure if you want to make sure your kids see an animal that's where you go yeah yeah for sure yep and as far as um other things that kids can do um for my kids we love to hike and so uh we have you know over 20 miles of hiking trails uh, the city of st Croix falls has put together a fantastic trail map that includes all of the trails within the city where to park how to get there how long it'll take, if it's easy or hard. Um, that's in conjunction with Interstate that also has um, nine fantastic trails uh, that you can do. So that's a, a great way to get the energy out for the kids. Um, we, If you have a, a dog, we have a dog park that is very um, popular as well. It's very large and uh, a lot of dogs go up there to socialize with other dogs and play. Uh, and that is right next to our Polk County Fairgrounds, which is also in St. Croix Falls, mm -hmm. um, which we're very happy. It's been here for over 140 years. That uh, is coming up the last week of July into August. So if you like going to the state fair, but you don't like the crowds and you want to try something a little smaller, but still a lot of fun, uh, the Polk County Fair is um, always the last week of July, first week of August, um, that Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And Sunday so check that out too. is there an entrance fee for that or is it a free entrance uh, it, there is an entrance fee okay. it, you can get a weekend pass okay or you can do like a day pass and I think it's seven dollars or something like okay. that so it's not too bad okay yep lots of fair food entertainment if you're super redneck and liked and actually a lot of people from the cities come up for this the demo derby the tractor pulls yeah it is, you can't go wrong it's with those. super Polk County. <laughs> <It's> super fun <laughs> yeah. i grew up small town minnesota yep. so i totally like well yeah you have a demolition derby of course right. you do <laughs> not everybody understands it my wife's not from the the rural area um and so me being on the fire department <laughs> i had to do the fire protection for that and so i'm like well, you got to come to see it and it's kind of loud but cars just smashing into each other, and it is it is a lot of fun. It's like bumper cars for adults. Yeah. <laughs> Mini, they have minivans, trucks, and cars, so it's, uh, it's a pretty wild deal. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, doesn't Cars 3 or something have a demo derby? I don't know. So if you want to get your kids ready for it, I think I think it does. Or Cars 2. I don't know. One of the Cars movies has it. They uh, Yeah, you, you're right. They do. Uh, it's kind of like the bus races in in cedar um down by cedar lake the cedar lake raceway we have bus rides yeah and bus races and i yeah. think they did have like a um, a bus race in one of the cars movies so okay yeah um, something like that yeah yeah so that is a lot of fun and actually uh they get the kids to do like these barbie cars you know the little jeeps and uh -huh. stuff and uh they'll get them super redneck too and nice. they'll be crashing into each other no, nothing dangerous but uh, the kids think it's funny, and you just know that those kids are going to be driving full-size cars yeah. by the time they're like 14. <laughs> right. so, yeah. Well, you know, if you live in the Dakotas, that's legal. Yeah. Okay, so we got a little bit off track there, but we came back around, and then I started asking a few last questions. Can you start asking a few last questions? Well, I did. And one of them had to do with the state parks on either side of the St. Croix River. So. Can I ask a real quick question? Yeah. 
Um, Interstate Park, do they allow like the Minnesota State sticker in Wisconsin and vice versa? They For used those to do two? that. Yeah, when we first moved up here, you would buy one or the other. Um, at some point in time, they discontinued that. Oh, okay. I think because Minnesota was getting robbed, everybody. Well, you know, <laughs> I don't know which one. Um, but I think it was a revenue thing between the oh, states okay. that they wanted to make sure you could do it. Um, if you want to drive into the parks mm -hmm. you can drive into the parks if you want to hike into the parks there's there's they charge you for the car so right so you can you go can, for free yeah off main street yeah. there's a way to to hike in um and off of taylor's falls there's uh, under the bridge yep. you can hike in yeah and so some people will do that just as a freebie you have a super walmart Taco and you Bell's have a... kicking off here now Ooh, Walmart. you also have is it you or Taylor's Falls that has go-karts? Um, we have go-karts. I thought so. Out of town, up by Quick Trip. Okay, um, but it's not, and, and this is different than Wild Mountain. Correct. Okay, yep. Yeah, miniature golf and golf go-karts are up on Highway 8, east of town. Um, and then at the Wild River, they have golf carts. Like, nice. And the whole, yeah. the whole fun thing, so. Nice. But, uh, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Kirk, so much for taking time to introduce us to St. Croix Falls. There was so much to learn. And here's what we didn't even talk about. St. Croix Falls has wineries, is on the Osceola and St. Croix Valley Railway, hosts several bed and breakfasts, invites you to try out glamping, and offers a vast array of farms and orchards. If you are looking for fun any time of the year, St. Croix Falls in the St. Croix Valley will not disappoint. And now, it's your turn to go do fun stuff. We do have a good fire department and rescue team if, if something were to go wrong. And, and uh, yeah. yeah, you don't even have to put that in there. I'm, I don't think I'm going to. <laughs> but, if you but, die, <laughs> we have a big mortuary too. <laughs> Well, you know, he is the mayor. He has to plug it all. <laughs> Wait, this is taking a turn. This right. is taking a turn. The dark side of St. Croix Falls. Um, oh, yeah. Um, St. Croix Falls is known as the City of Trails. That's uh, kind of our trademark, um, is the City of Trails. So we have well over 20 miles of trails, and those trails are... Uh, is that your Yes. <laughs> it's not my fault. Yeah. Uh, you'll have to cut that up. I can do that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I do remember the days of jumping off cliffs. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I jumped off a really tall one that uh, I would never do again. <laughs> now we're old and smarter, yeah. wiser. Yeah.